Hi, for today we're talking about biofertilizers and Christian's going to show us a few different ones that he makes and explain what it is and then we're going to be finishing off with tasting two of our bubblies, our Australia's Pinot Noir MCC as well as the Chardonnay. Okay, so we're starting off with the first one of the sprays that Christian makes. Christian, what is, um, what is this combination that you have here? Yeah, so um, this is our earthworm farm where, uh, that we keep the red wrinkler earthworms. Like you can see, they're very small little mm -hmm. red earthworms. Yes. Uh, they live in low oxygen areas, so they don't actually digest soil. They only digest cow, uh, cow manure Okay. and manures of pastures. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason we, we um, have an earthworm farm is because we use these teas for soil, uh, soil sprays. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it is, is you take the, the microbes that's in the rumen of the cows, Mm -hmm. You feed the cow dung to the earthworms, the earthworm digests the cow dung and inoculates it with its own different aerobic bacteria mm -hmm. and you get then a mother culture of earthworm casts that look like this. Oh, uh, okay. Beautiful stuff, just pure um, cow dung that's been digested. Um, and then we'll take uh, six kilograms of earthworm cast like this. We'll put it in a thousand liters of about 19, 20 degrees Celsius water. Mm -hmm and we, we aerate it, we bubble it yes. um, and then we feed it uh, the earthworm manure different um, food sources in the tea mm -hmm. we feed the tea uh, different food sources uh, to make either bacterial tea or mm -hmm. fungal tea depending on oh what you feed the earthworms yeah yeah oh, what we okay. feed the earthworms but also when we when we brew the water Micro we yes. add the food source for the microbes yes so for bacteria you'll do simple sugars like molasses and that yeah. type of thing if you want to breed the fungus that's in here, you'll use complex sugars, so kelp, uh, fish hydrolysate or fish amino acids. Yes. This type of, that oh, type that's of thing. Fascinating. So you feed whichever one you want to keep alive. Exactly. Pretty yeah. much. So okay. if we do a cover crop, um, which is a mm. grass or legume species or grain, that's that's a yes. bacterial orientated plant, mm. then we'll do simple sugars. Yes. Uh, but because vines are shrubs or woody plants, mm. they love fungal orientated soils. Mm. Um, and so most of our teas we do during the year is fungal orientated and that we do with kelp and, and fish mm. amino acids that we make ourselves which we actually okay. mix with the yeah. with the um, earthworm tea. So do you empty this whole thing out when you take it out or do you just take it bit by bit out? Just bit by bit. We, um, so we, you keep we, the population? Yeah. Okay. When you feed earthworms you actually use um, very little bit of food. They mm -hmm. don't like a lot of food so you'll add mm -hmm. a little thin layer of cow um, dung mm -hmm. and uh, when you dig down into you can see here on this layer it's already been digested mm -hmm. and as you go down it goes blacker and even more humidified mm -hmm. so we'll dig from the bottom out where mm -hmm. there's no earthworms all the earthworms are on top okay but every now mm -hmm. and then small little earthworms does come in and little eggs but Shame. because we aerate the water mm -hmm. the earthworms stay alive okay. so when this we, when we're done making the tea Mm. We just come and chuck the earthworms oh, back onto the compost heap. Okay, so you so continuously keep it alive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's a it's a, a very mm. sustainable system, mm. really. Yeah. yeah. So we're standing here by the cow fat system that um, Christian has been doing since I've known Christian. <laughs> so can you just tell us a little bit more about uh, what goes in here? Yeah. yeah. So this is um, cow dung from lactating cows. Um, well, because they had a cough mm -hmm. with a lot of um, uh, calcium in the, in the body that's also mm -hmm. expressed in the dung, so we mm -hmm. use obviously cow dung, mm -hmm. um, mixed with eggshells from the restaurant, mm -hmm. um, and then we add all the biodynamic uh, compost preparations in here the mm -hmm. yarrow, oak bark, okay. dandelion, uh, val the valerium, all of that. Yes. And uh, that guides the whole composting process. But what's mm -hmm. wonderful about this preparation is the mycorrhizal fungus that grows in here. Yes. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. when we open it, you'll see there's quite a bit of mycelium starting to grow, mm -hmm. and then later on the strands of mycorrhizal fungus as well form. Mm -hmm. And I make this prepar well. We used to make it to just put out on the ground mm -hmm. to get the, the microbial activity going, mm -hmm. especially where we had the soils which we had to repair after conventional uh, mm -hmm. farming and stuff like that. Yeah. But now why I make it is because we're planting a lot of vineyards, mm -hmm. and uh, I use about one kilogram of this in about 200 liters of water. Mm -hmm. And then I add it to the young vines. Yes. So I let the young vines stand overnight in it. Mm -hmm. And then when I plant out the vines, the mycorrhizal okay. spores are latches to the roots of the vines. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, um, when you plant the vine, mm -hmm. it sends down artificial roots, yes. which then feeds the young vines 
mm. nutrients and water and the yes. vine gives it carbohydrates yeah. and it creates um, the symbiosis but mm. what it does it gives the young vines a lot more roots mm. uh, to, to get nutrients from. So. Yeah to be able to grow faster especially yeah. in the conditions that we have here with a lot of wind yes. you need to do everything you yeah. can. Right. Okay. So, so in the olden days mm. or a couple of years ago I used to do the preparation 500 which is the cow horn manure Yes. Um, for winter and mm. in uh, uh, late spring I used to do the cow pet pits because it's mm -hmm. quick to make mm -hmm. and uh, um, it's a faster process yes but now I do the earthworm teas mm -hmm. and these ones I make for all the young vines okay can we open it up when yeah. did you make sure. this uh, yeah so uh, this these pits I packed about three weeks ago mm -hmm. um, and uh, the mycorrhizal fungus hasn't started to grow but you can see some of the mycelium and some of the, mm -hmm. the little fungus heads coming out so you made this three weeks ago but um, how do you know if you need to mix it and how long does it take until you can finally take it and put it through your flow form? Yeah, so about a, a month and a half to two months. Okay. Uh, the idea is, uh, this is only three weeks old, so after mm -hmm. a month you will turn it, aerate it again, get the mm -hmm. oxygen going, getting also the dung at the bottom to come up. Okay. Um, then you add your valerium juice which brings in the heat. Mm -hmm. Uh, which resets the, the fermentation process mm -hmm. um, and uh, by that stage you pack it down leave it for another month so about mm -hmm. two months yes. but ideally it's done when you can see the strands of mycorrhizal funguses okay so um, there is a visual indication yeah. that you look for yes okay. the, the, this is looking very um, good the fact that there's no mm -hmm. black funguses it's only white uh, mycelium and stuff growing mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, everything smells and <laughs> you know looks aerobic still okay so it's a yeah. visual also visual Mm -hmm. uh, but it's now time to, to actually turn this whole thing over and uh, okay. repack it. So you only turn it once? Only once, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you use about uh, uh, one kilogram mm -hmm. in 80 liters of water yes. as a soil spray. And you do mm -hmm. that with a, a branch, which you dip in a bucket. So when you spray oh, it, yes. it yeah. falls in with a droplet size in the soil. Nice mm -hmm. heavy, heavy mm -hmm. drop, so it can pull into the earth. Okay. Um, if, if you're going to use it for a soil spray, but mm -hmm. we do this just for the young guys. For the young guys. Yeah. Okay, so we've done the soil sprays now, and now we're by the very interesting part, <laughs> Christian's fermentations. I prefer my type of fermentation, but what are you fermenting here, Christian? Okay, yeah. so the reason this big drum is here is um, because we, we've got a big farm, uh, we, mm -hmm. everything that we do we have to do in bulk. But yes. when I started with biofertilizers, I used to make them in these little five liters and experiment. Mm -hmm. And you would make fertilizers and then you have to go big. Mm. for you know big hectares yes but basically what this drum is is it's like a cow's stomach mm -hmm. uh, with a tube that runs into water mm -hmm. and uh, we use effective microbes um, so that would be ectomycetes phototropic microbes uh, lactobacillus mm -hmm. and also a, a rumen the a cow mm -hmm. rumen um, as a digestive source mm -hmm. and then we take materials which we can find locally or for free or on the farm mm -hmm. that's high in nutrient value yes but because they're not soluble they're not uh, plant available we make them plant available by yeah. putting them into a biodigester okay with the microbes that solubilizes the nutrients mm -hmm. um, and make it plant available or water in a water solution and that we can spray on the on the um, on the vines Okay. So um, a biofermenter and biofertilizer. Okay. And the, the way that we do this is um, you can make your own EMs. Um, mm -hmm. There's lots of different ways to do it. EM1, mm -hmm. which is lact uh, lactobacillus, mm -hmm. uh, you can make with rice water, mm -hmm. which you um, f basically you strain off the water, mm -hmm. you ferment it for three days, you add milk, you ferment it mm -hmm. for another week, and then you add um, a sugar sauce mm -hmm. and after a couple of weeks you sit with lactobacillus. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so the idea is to just multiply the lactobacillus that, to be able to use that's it right. as or, a EM. Or, or ectomycetes mm -hmm. or phototropic marks depending on what you are wanting to work with. Okay. Um, but uh, the easiest for us and even still the cheapest is um, Emro Japan has mm -hmm. um, um, basically made a solution called the Mother EM that mm -hmm. contains all these little fermenting okay. microbes yes so we will purchase a liter yes uh, which will cost us maybe 200 rand mm -hmm. and out of that one liter uh, yeah. we can make seven 20 liters what we call a, 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 a multiplied em so okay. you take little bits and you mm -hmm. multiply the ems mm -hmm. now you can only multiply them once mm -hmm. but still it stretches that okay. 200 rand a far way <laughs> so yes 
Okay. Then what you are left with is a multi EM, mm -hmm. which is a microbial solution with a very low pH. Yeah. So it's got a pH of about four. Mm. And smells like vinegar. <laughs> it smells like vinegar, mm. yeah. Yeah. A vinegar beer. Mm, that's a winemaker's worst smell. So. <laughs> that's a ferment. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll do then is we'll take 750 mils of, mm. of the multi EM mm. and we'll mix it with a sugar sauce like molasses. Yes. Um, lukewarm water mm. and uh, the materials that we want to digest. Mm. So um, right here I've made a fish fertilizer of a fish amino acid. Mm -hmm. Now what's wonderful about this is if you make a normal biodynamic fish ferment mm -hmm. it's a rotting process yes. and it's a very stinky process and you lose mm -hmm. a lot of nutrients to the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. This being a fermentation all the nutrients stay inside the bottle yes. so you don't lose any of the good uh, amino okay. acids. Okay. Um, and if you smell, yeah, you can <laughs> mm. it's it's really not that stinky. It, it smells no. It smells like a like, like a cod liver oil. Mm, yeah, you know? no, it does smell. Yeah, so you can smell the oils and things, and that's great. Yes. Good, that's all, everything you want. So amino acids, micronutrients, mm. and also the bacteria that's, that's in there. When you spray the vines, it washes down to the mm. soil, and it's a great microbial feed. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, this one we make outside in the sun because we want the phototropic microbes to take over mm -hmm. um, and the phototropic microbes is the ones that uh, helps with photosynthesis and mm -hmm. with the forming of the yeah, fruit and so photo, on. Yeah, photo like drawing light. Yeah. Yes. So a biofertilizer really isn't just a fertilizer, mm -hmm. it's a whole complex system in one. So you first of all need <coughs> to make your microbes, concentrate that and then yes. you need to uh, ferment whichever you want to ferment to concentrate that that's right and then you feed your leaves that's right through and you use yeah. different things on the farm so mm. for instance if I need a potassium mm. I would either use sunflower stalks or I'll use mm. sheep manure okay um, if I need uh, micronutrients and mm. amino acids I would use fish now we've got mm. we're very close to the ocean mm. and uh, I go and fetch about uh, four tons of mackerel that has just wow. gone past his sell by date and I yes. get it for free uh, so, Fantastic. and uh, this you'll you'll spray at about um, ten liters to the hectare. Okay. Wow, that's uh, not a lot. That's eh? not a lot. No. Yes. So, but it's very nutrient dense. Mm. Um, one which I like to make also, and I thought we could make it, but I think Tom was gonna. Yeah. Uh, uh, is like um, I used to make a fermented chicken manure, mm -hmm. which was very high in nitrogen. Yes. But I had to put a little bit of bukashi or bran. Uh, mm -hmm. just to protect the microbes from the chicken manure mm -hmm. and it's very a very hard very effective fertilizer but it's a lot of nitrogen yes. so I've replaced that with rabbit manure oh yeah. yeah okay so rabbit manure is a cold manure yes. also very high in, in nutrients mm -hmm. um, especially if the, if the rabbits has been eating stuff like uh, lucerne mm -hmm. which is very high in protein mm -hmm. um, and because it's a cold manure not a warm manure like chicken manure you can mm -hmm. ferment it straight yeah. Yes. Uh, it gives you a very good fertilizer. Okay. Um, and then this one it smells almost like a salsa. Salsa. <laughs> oh yeah, it actually does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's actually I very strong. I need my dip, my chips. Yeah. yeah. So this one is um, insecticide, mm. and uh, it is chilies and garlic. Mm. And uh, we've made this uh, to use in early spring when there's a lot of vine weevil activity. Mm. And we never spray this at night because we do farm with bees also on the farm. Mm -hmm. And this is very potent if it gets onto, onto a bee's skin, it will kill it. Okay. So we'll spray them in, at night. Uh, mm -hmm. We are from 8 o'clock till 11 o'clock at night. Uh, mm -hmm. If there's vine weevil activity and vine weevils are nocturnal, yes. we'll go to the young vines and spray our okay. homemade um, salsa. salsa. <laughs> <laughs> and generally, how long does it take to make all of these bio So this is very quick and this is why I also love it. To yeah. make, say, a fish uh, um, fertilizer biodynamically mm -hmm. will take up to seven months. Mm. And then you sort mm. of a stink product and your workers yeah. don't want to work with it and I don't want to work with it. Mm. This takes only one month. That's yeah, fantastic. So it's something okay. you can make like instantly. that. Instantly. Instantly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can do. Um, you mm -hmm. can also move this uh, biodigester into the shade and then you mm -hmm. can do fermented plant extracts, mm -hmm. which would be fermented comfrey mm -hmm. or lucerne or mm -hmm. anything like that. Whatever your need is. But do you do then soil uh, leaf analyses? Always, yeah. And then you can see I need yeah. potassium or nitrogen yeah. or whichever. Yeah. And then you 
do your hocus pocus <laughs> accordingly. That's right. A lot okay. of people um, mm. do what you call shotgun organic mm. farming, yes. uh, where they just make a solution and they try and get as much stuff in there as a shotgun mm. remedy. Yes. Uh, we don't believe in that. Um, mm. We go through very strict auditing processes mm. with um, our organic certification yes. bodies, and we always have to prove what we've put on the vineyard, why we've put it on. Mm. So it's not just leaf, uh, soil analysis, it's leaf analysis. And according mm. to that, we look at okay, what's on the farm, what's in the area that we mm. can use, and what's the most cost-effective way yes. um, of making a fertilizer yeah. or something like that. Okay, so we're continuing with the biofertilizers. And uh, this is a combination that I've never seen. If I look here, it looks like you're cooking, Christian. But if <laughs> I go there, I prefer not to eat it. So. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, um, a product that of, of a fertilizer that uh, the Vedics in India has made mm. for hundreds of years. Yes. It's called Panjigavya, which uh, basically means five things from a cow. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we started to form a sustainable and biodynamic, mm. uh, I wanted to look at all the areas in the world and yes. looked at what people did for hundreds of years mm. and still do because it's a sustainable system. Mm. And uh, so the Vedics in India used to make uh, um, uh, all these preparations from mm. cow dung and so on yes. and uh, it's so effective that they still use it today mm. so what this is is the five things from a cow which is cow dung mm -hmm. uh, ghee or clarified butter mm. it is uh, cow milk um, the cow curds mm. and the piece de resistance the cow urine <laughs> so, <laughs> I won't tell you how we got it <laughs> but it is a method <laughs> there is a method um, and basically what you want to do is you want to take the microbes that's in the cow dung mm. and you want to multiply them in the millions and billions yes. but not just the microbes the cow dung contains a lot of enzymes which has got uh, plant growth hormones in it and because mm. um, it reeds yeah. that's right yeah mm. and also a lot of um, minerals and vitamins which is fantastic for plants mm. and uh, so the vedics worked out this way of of multiplying mm. um, everything that is in the cow dung okay all right Mm -hmm. So uh, basically what it is, is uh, about a kilogram of cow dung mm -hmm. with the same amount of clarified butter. My clarified butter is a little bit mm -hmm. little, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and the, what the clarified butter does is it seals the cow dung nicely um, okay. so that when you mix it through, yeah. it doesn't go putrid. Putrid? What's putrid? Yeah, so it doesn't go off. Oh, off. Yeah, because oh, okay. this takes about, um, about a month to ferment. Mm -hmm. And when you work with cow, fresh cow dung, um, it contains mm -hmm. um, antibiotics also, so you can mm -hmm. work with it with your hands, there's yes. nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And you can actually smell the vitamins in there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's very concentrated. Yeah. yeah. So then um, the, the curds and, <laughs> and the milk obviously contains the um, lactic acids, mm -hmm. um, which we'll then mix further. Yeah. Um, very ripe bananas or any fruit you can find which has mm -hmm. gone past its sell by date don't, don't go and buy new bananas yes and this is just for potassium and then a sugar source for the microbes okay and what sort of relationship how much banana? so so um everything you use with punchy govia must be the same amount okay so if it's one kilogram of cow dung and then it's one kilogram of clarified butter one liter of milk one okay. liter so one, say, one, say, one. one well, yeah the same mm -hmm. amount so i'm a little bit off here mm -hmm. but and then later it's One just liter? <laughs> <laughs> and then the cow da, uh, the cow urine and the, the 50 percent of the npk or the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium is not in the cow manure but actually in the cow urine oh, I didn't yes. know that. so yeah. cow urine is by itself a fertilizer mm. um, and what we'll do then is you'll mix all this through but you'll mix it all through till it becomes almost like a, a peanut butter consistency mm. And then you'll get, in, uh, you'll fit your your, your favorite T-shirt, mm. close it off so that mm. the insects can't come in and breed in it. Mm. And uh, you, you 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 every morning, uh, three three times during the morning, you'll come mm. and stir it. Okay. And it takes about a month, yeah. and then your panjigavia is done. How do you know when it's done? Oh well, it smells fantastic. <laughs> it, it, it's oh, yeah. got like this cookie smell to it, very sweet smell. Oh, like this a leasy fermenting smell. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. This, but very sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no traces of, you can't make out bananas of milk or anything like that. Oh, it's uh, homogenized, completely, properly mixed. Completely. Okay. Um, and then um, you can actually start getting that smell now already. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's perfect to use as a, as a foliar spray. 
So uh, it contains mm. a lot of microbes, a lot of enzymes, mm. uh, plant growth hormones, mm. and a massive nutrient value to it. Do you then dilute this in water? You again? have to dilute it, yeah. Okay, how so much? So I would say this is a, what, about a 10 kilogram bucket. This mm. is about two sprays on one hectare two vineyard. Sprays. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great, right. and you spray it with the horses. Spray and... it with the horses, or if you only have a backpack sprayer, mm. but I mean, we use the horses. Mm. So. Okay. Yeah. After talking about so many fermentations, I chose our wine that ferments twice <laughs> to um, actually um, contribute to the day. Um, so first of all, we're going to talk about the Australia fruit, so the Chardonnay, but I also have the Pinot Noir here. So for the Chardonnay, I'm struggling. <coughs> Maybe take this fork as well. I lost my powers like for so long. So the Australia Chardonnay is um, very interesting. So we, this is more or less a 2015 vintage, but then um, we bottled a 2009 um, MCC at a lower atmospheric pressure, and then uh, we took those bottles, took everything out, and we added it to the 2015 and then we bottled it. So the reason why we did that to have the 2015 as the fresh component and then the 2009 gives you that very sort of biscuitiness. So the 2015 uh, naturally fermented in um, barrels and then we added the 2009 and then we bottled it again. For the second fermentation we do, um, we do actually inoculate it. And we left this under crown cap for over two years and then only uh, disgorged it so where we took the leaves off and we don't add a lot of dosage so it's a very elegant style then we're moving on to the Pinot Noir so for the Pinot Noir we don't have Pinot Noir as you know on the property we buy the grapes in from Elgin so just over the hill beautiful just here and uh, these are Pinot Noir Champagne clones and we pick quite early um, press it the same as the Chardonnay in our horizontal basket press and fermented this in concrete eggs as well as in the barrels um, primary fermentation is once again a natural fermentation and then after about 8 months on the lees then we bottle it put it to bottle and this was under crown cap for about mm, 15 months more or less degorged it and um, yeah, put it uh, under cork so you can see the color it's very light it's very fresh in style it's a very nice fruit driven um, this is very very good with oysters bubbly and oysters is just a fantastic mm -hmm. berry yeah. So that's the uh, my part of the fermentation. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>